All right, everybody, here we go. We have new challengers in the form of team. I don't know if they're formally known as, currently known as, but team for, for the, the win. win. Indeed. <laughs> but let, first, let's introduce our reigning, defending, undisputed champions, Atila in the Deep Sea Osprey and the Kraken in the Shark Helix, the red team on the left side. And the challengers, we have Pro 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 Pro. Yeah, you got and it the happy first time. Death. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joyful demise in the Chrome Saucer <laughs> and the standard stock Helix. Like, oh, oh my God, uh, they're here to just do perform a ritual slapdown. We'll see if they're successful in that, but they've got the skills, but let's see if they've got the map knowledge. Well, here's the thing. I don't know if Happy's ever played on this map, but as far as I know, out of all the maps that I've created, I believe Pro 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 is most familiar with this one. So, at least one of them dudes knows. Immediately going for the bottom outpost, and so far ignoring top? Uh, what do you huh. mean? Uh, the, the the low ground, sorry. Oh, the low, low ground. ground, yeah. Outpost. No, I think I think Happy that's an outpost took... that up till now we've seen most teams kind of ignore, and then just segueing into a ferry over to the the, the top. high ground. Yeah, top. yeah, makes sense. It's very very open up here at the top. I I definitely have to go back and do a cosmetic pass on this, but um, I wanted it to be nice and open. Um, rocks are annoying, right? So. A lot of Bucky Dillo, a couple of Teslas thrown in there. Meanwhile, Red. Risky? Longhorn, Longhorn, couple of flackers. Oh, I kind of lost you for a quick second there. That was weird. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, with, with this amount of space in between all the posts, uh, or, you know, between the, uh, the positions for this mid fight, uh, it does make sense to to go with Bucky's. Bucky's are or not bu Bucky's and and uh, Dillos. Dillos are fine too. They're they're not so squishy because they're less susceptible to sniping with being so far apart. Uh, you have a little bit more reaction time. It's a little bit riskier for the enemy to go a little bit deeper in enemy territory, etc. 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 Carmen team committing to the mid fight despite the fact that they don't have an Osprey. I'm curious to see how this pans out because they really don't have enough repair units to sustain this engagement now that artillery are in the mix. Indeed, and everyone knows how uh, you know how talented of an Osprey player Tyla is. So okay, Kraken doing a flyby on the bottom, making sure there's no hidden units down there with those trees. Pretty hilarious. Heavy oh, mines going down. Uh, although they could metagame it a little bit more and throw jam trees. That is true. That is true. So you have to really have a sharp eye when you follow, you know, when you fly over. That is a good point. Um, yeah, more healing units coming out. Buckies and artillery. Oh, the Kraken and Attila with an Aegis as well, going to nullify all of those Helix missiles. So happy to have trying to kill them, but just none of the missiles actually reaching the ground because of that Aegis. We have uh, a Helix on both sides, which again, I'm a little surprised to see, but the Saucer versus Osprey, it's a very big difference in this style of battle. But no Aegis for, for the win, when by all means they should have several. Probably, probably. Uh, 45 to 52, so it's not like they are significantly down in this fight, but uh, a lot of those are in heavy mines at the mid. Happy Death once again just keeps trying to get the kill, but keeps getting shut down by those Aegis. It just basically nullifies his mech. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a little surprising to see the Carbon team still committing to the degree that they are on this mid-fight when they are clearly behind. Um, I'm a little surprised to see them not pull back, not, you know, switch, uh, switch their focus to something else, because there is a lot of different options that you can go with here, and Kraken actually getting finished off by Seeker right there. His D key was stuck. Right, that's what she said. Um, so... The, uh, the Carbon team actually now going to reallocate their focus to the bottom. Actually going to clear a decent amount. Does Pro 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 have death rate? No. Yeah. Uh, all in the blink. But Weird. When, when you're a player down, it's easy to capitalize on that and snipe a few units. Right. Even if it isn't the Osprey. I'd like to see Red transitioning a couple Buckies to the bottom uh, on the low ground here, just to try and start whittling down on that outpost, keep their options open if they need to expand their press. Right, um, you know, after seeing a couple of games on this, I feel like I need to lighten up the, uh, you know, the mid, bottom mid neutrals just a little more. 
Maybe replace the goalie with a long horn, something like that. Yeah, top top tends to be the focus, but then again, it's the players who start to deviate from that top outpost first that tend to seem to capitalize more. Because they've got, like, right now, well, now that they've spread to the bridges, they don't have a clear, clear push path to board anymore. Indeed. But I feel like moving on the bridges and keeping more units on the bridges tends to be good. This is such a wide front for both sides. Uh, right. Kraken getting some peppers in the mix, and you just got missile spam to shit on the, the southern front. Uh, the upkeep numbers are actually pretty even. Um, not so many heavy mines left on the carbon side. And Happy Death now going to ferry, but very low on health. Needs to transform Q heal, but getting finished off by Kraken. That was a little bit late in terms of the... Um, you know, the transform Q heal. I expected Happy Death to do that a little bit earlier. Pro Pro sticking with the Buster centric. So a lot of Busters, handful of artillery. Carbon's forces, while formidable, are going to be really weak to anything that gets up close. I feel like this is just uh, eight zippers away from falling apart and just collapsing. It, um, yeah, I, I agree with that. That's, it's, it's kind of questionable. I'm not really sure. Uh, yeah, again, it's, it's still. I mean, they were able to bring it back. Oh, and now Happy Death. Gonna ferry a couple butchers here at the bottom. Gonna go for a neutralize and cheese. Oh no, does the carbon t or does the red team see it? No, what does he have in Q to defend with? Two longhorn go down. The whopper spam, so they're they got a full Q. They can't they can't build anything. So Happy Death getting that cheese briefly, but it will go back down to neutral pretty soon. Had a couple jackals in Q, but that was definitely not enough for this defense that the red team was able to mount. Burying back a lot of units, actually. And now red team is going to go for bottom. Whereas Carbon Team has Pro not capitalizing cleared all. on this, though, able to clear out all the units on the northern side of that outpost. Uh, Pro Pro, while still having kind of a positional disadvantage and dropping a lot of his units onto heavy mines and not having any healing and not having the Osprey, is really, really good at monopolizing attention. Right, and that is one of those things that I realize Pro Pro Pro, Pro is very good at. When you have, when you are down an opponent. On the field, Pro 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 is very, very good at realizing what he can do with his mech without interference from the enemy. Happy Death getting finished off. Lots of damage going down by those flackers. But Carbon oh, Team is getting surrounded. The, the, but they locked down that northern outpost, so now Red's on the back foot. They're still. Strangely enough, Red's got an upkeep advantage, but is positionally disadvantaged. I'm, I'm very curious to see what would happen if they can actually take this bottom outpost under their control. I am fairly convinced that I need to lighten up these uh, these neutrals at the bottom just a little bit more. Maybe uh, a Brute and a Sam or something like that in terms of uh, defending infantry and then swap the goalie to a Longhorn. You think that's a little bit much if I do that? Or it's about right? I think that would be decent. Okay. Because the, right. the bottom outpost just takes so long to go down. It's always going to be an afterthought. Top, I think, is always going to take precedence. Then I guess, um, in, in a way that it could even be defended lighter than the top. And maybe I should put a little bit more top. That would be a decent balance. Yep. That might make some sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, it positionally... Bottom, bottom is a... Yeah, there is a center bottom outpost. It's just the mini-map, you can't really tell. Yeah. If, you, if positionally top is that strong, then maybe bottom needs to have, um, you know... Or maybe we just need players to try going bottom and not focus so hard on top. It might turn out that bottom's a better outpost. Because if you take bottom, you got straight path to port. That is With true. Ferry. With fairy, yeah. Whereas top, you really don't, because trees block you, right? Trees don't block you, and it's but it's just such a long way around, uh, and you literally have to go around a, an opponent's outpost, which is, you know, it gives them a lot of time to defend and reposition. Ooh, that is a lot of artillery coming out of Pro Pro. But... That is quite a lot, yes. Four firing down, raining down on... Oh, God, six. That is quite so a lot. This is why we value the high ground because no matter what red does they're going to lose that fight Indeed. so they need to reposition go somewhere else so they're going to put a little bit more of their resources into that bottom center hopefully capture that happy death getting taken down again by a flacker 
Carbon now shifting their focus to the bottom. Uh, is there anything happening in the lower areas? No. A uh, couple of um, couple of random red units on the trees on the right side. A couple of buckies, but uh, will that be enough to to distract the carbon team enough for the red team to take the bottom mid? And it does look like it is. Red, red close has gone neutral from the artillery fire. Artillery continuing to rain down, starting to destroy some of those red units. So red needs to really capitalize on this bottom outpost position and use their momentum to their advantage uh, and take those undefended carbon posts that are ahead. Otherwise, they're going to lose because Pro Pro is going to start ferrying. Well, yeah, they have had their outpost neutralized there, and it's going to be really difficult for the red team to keep up. Uh, the Brit, oh wow, the, the the carbon team making a defensive line on the bridge. That is a, an intimidating freaking line. I'm a little surprised to see um, that the red team has not ferried up to the high ground here on the bottom right, uh, where, okay, I guess... It's really a shame to see red not do anything with that position, that they took the outpost and just sat there. They really needed to get momentum get up on the high ground, get up on the bridge, get up on that uh, mountain pass on the bottom, just somewhere, somehow. Uh, even right now, clearing those neutral units in the very bottom center is not a bad use of your resources. Yeah, I mean, it would give them a lot of options and a lot more um, a lot more angles to approach the carbon team with. Uh, pro, 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 dropping those goalies and artillery in that spot is a real, basically the, the, the choice spot, I would say. Getting a kill on a Tyla there at the top uh, and pro, okay, what is it? Okay, has some runners. He's about to try to cheese. Uh, it's it's pretty. Oh no, he's hiding units. He's hiding units. One of the big strengths of Team for the Win is they're unlike a lot of other teams that they very rarely leave units idle on the map. And so while the front changes, the action, the position of everything happening changes. Carbon team had a shitload of units on that top center outpost, and red team had a shitload of units on the outpost that it was gunning at. Carbon has all ferried all of their units off of that so that they're no longer wasting their time. Red unit, red team has not been able to do the same thing, and so finds that the upkeep at the actual position of conflict is completely tilted in Carbon's favor. Yeah, they like if you look at their left side. There is so many. There's basically the same number of units there as at this bottom mid fight, uh, and there are so many pieces of artillery firing in to this um, to this bottom mid that uh, I don't know how the red team is even able to keep up at all right now. Okay, what did Pro 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 do? Did he? Okay, he already attacked this. God, stupid mini map is really bothering me. Um. <laughs> But they were not able to get, uh, well, okay, they Pushes got neutralized. The bottom left, ton of T-45s, okay, it's a interesting choice, but effective. And now they have and to then... split their attention again to the top left. Yeah, but Happy Death drops a single Tesla coil is going to be able to just wipe up all of that artillery. I mean, that's what happens if you leave no defensive units Back with your artillery. Grid, <laughs> bottom center completely collapses. Uh, Carbon team pulls all their stuff off of the bridge, drops it down onto the low ground. Uh, for the win is getting the momentum here. Is going to be able to push everything back. They have both middle outposts, so they're going to have an upkeep advantage. They're going to have a credit advantage. Uh, their next target is likely going to be setting up another artillery line, knocking down that bottom low ground outpost. Uh, they've got four artillery on the bridge already firing down that red team just now notices. And right now it's not a debilitating upkeep difference, 44 to 70. I mean, the carbon team in theory is not about to just, you know, completely roll through. But with the, uh, you know, the methodical approach that Pro Pro Pro, Pro and Happy Death are capable of, it's not looking too great for the red team. If it was anyone else playing the carbon color, I would say they could still bring this back, but yeah. this is... <laughs> they usually don't right. uh, leave the openings that you would capitalize. Yes, so in this exactly. particular case, you would look at the basically completely undefended low ground outpost, um, uh, either one uh, close to the port back on the carbon side, where you know you cheese with four infantry, you capture that outpost, you start spamming jackals uh, to the other outpost, you can completely upkeep block carbon team but expect Pro Pro and Happy Death to have a very rapid response. Saucer being able to summon infantry out its ass, also helping to be an anti-cheese mech. Yeah, uh, like you said, if it was any other team, uh, especially the Kraken and the Tyla, very, very good players, 
you know, you would say that they definitely still have a chance even though they are behind, but Happy Death and Pro 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 uh, doesn't, you know, realistically speaking, are two of the top, at, at comfortably in the top five, uh, possibly the two best, best players in the game as of right now. The only ones that can really rival them are possibly Maor, Red Dog, um, off the top of my head, those are the, those are the ones that can potentially present a, a real challenge to them. Pro Pro getting finished off in the air. Ooh. Oh, wow, that's a lot of death. <laughs> Boy. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> bottom out post goes neutral. Uh, red units are going to get taken out if Attila doesn't act quickly. We're starting to transition into Gorgons and Goliaths, but Carbon just has so many more of those units and no more. Way. Hey, there's a Bertha. No way. Oh, it's the Bertha is having a lot of trouble firing up to the bridge. <laughs> yeah, as you, uh, would, low, as you low ground loses. Oh yeah, low ground can't do this. There's no way. It's not even the the inaccuracy. It's just it's that's such a height difference. You cannot win from the low ground at that outpost. You need a position on the high ground. Then um, I have a couple of changes to consider for sure. Happy Death and Pro basically just going to clean up at this point. That's all they really need need to do to uh, pull off this win. Uh, Kraken and Atila, uh, it's it is basically goodbye time that they how to switch. <laughs> okay, Happy, how long has he really been away from the game? Because well, win or lose, this was Kraken and Attila's last game, being their fifth. That is true. That is true. But I would expect that when you're having trouble being assaulted on that low ground outpost in the chasm, that the bridge becomes your primary push point. That they had tons of artillery on the bridge, so you reinforce and push from your other outpost at your close. Yep. Yep. I mean... That would be what I'd expect. But they didn't really seem to do that. They seem to be building the artillery and just kind of focusing on keeping their units alive. And I think that's one of the key um, downfalls or pitfalls that, that a lot of Aramic players uh, fall into. I'm using the word a little bit too much, but yeah. They um, they tend to prioritize on attacking rather, or sorry, defending rather than attacking, where aggression um, and controlling the action and controlling the pace seems to be more of a winning um, approach to, to Aramic. Um, defense is safe, for sure. But uh, when you're against players that definitely know what they're doing, then uh, sometimes defense is danger. Is there anything hidden anywhere? No? Okay. I can't no. possibly no, know. They've got no units left. There's 17 upkeep. They, this is where you hit the surrender. This is where you hit surrender, and there you go. A Tyla and Kraken. I mean, great run. Great run by a Tyla and Kraken, but um, our new king's... Um, I guess if you're going to have to uh, put betting odds, this was the more likely outcome. But uh, pro, 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 and happy death. Carbon team taking the throne against the and Kraken. It was such a strong opening. Kraken and Attila had such a strong position at that middle outpost. But when Carbon started redirecting their forces to the south, they just weren't really able to keep up with it. The, the back capping really kept them on the back foot. But I think a couple key plays and deaths were also a big contributor. Yeah. Uh, you know, pro, 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 taking so much advantage of those um, of those attacks. They're a lot better on capitalizing on player kills. Yes, exactly. And, and to be fair, uh, pro and happy did their fair share of dying as well, as you can see. Um, four by pro and five by happy. But um, you know, the the carbon team, or sorry, the red team, did not really seem to have that same type of initiative that the Carm team uh, had. So uh, we will move on. Let's see who's next in queue.